BPC-157, the incredible peptide that's able to stimulate healing all throughout the body, including the brain, the muscles, tendons, gastrointestinal tract, and within the vascular tissue as well. Today, we're gonna to talk about the mechanism of action of how BPC-157 works, where it came from, a little bit about the different forms of BPC-157, and how it's taken. So what exactly is BPC-157, also known as pentadec arginate? It's a 15 amino acid sequence peptide that was originally developed as a synthetic form of a naturally occurring protein that's found in the gastric acid juice within the human body. This is likely found there to help with protecting the cells in that area because of the massive damage they can take, but researchers found that BPC-157 has cytoprotective effects not only within the gastrointestinal tract, but all throughout the body as well, and that's how we can use it as a healing peptide today. So how exactly does BPC-157 work? One of the ways that it works is through the stimulation of angiogenesis or new blood vessel formation. It does this through the upregulation of what's called vascular endothelial growth factor. This is a growth factor that's responsible for the new blood vessel formation as well as the healing of damaged blood vessels. So in a site of injury, one of the issues with the healing response is the lack of oxygen and nutrient delivery to that area. So when BPC-157 is able to upregulate the vascular endothelial growth factor, we get actually better blood supply to that area as well as oxygenation to that tissue so it accelerates and improves the healing response, but also during the healing of inflammatory byproducts and possibly other reactive oxygen species that need to be taken away and detoxified or removed from that area. So BPC-157 is great at stimulating the new blood vessel formation or angiogenesis to an injured site area, as well as helping to improve the areas in which any of that microvasculature or even ma major vasculature has been damaged. BPC-157 also works through the stimulation of what's called fibroblast growth factor. This upregulates the fibroblasts in an area, which allows for better mesenchymal tissue repair, extracellular matrix deposition, and the stimulation of new collagen production in that area. So, when we have an injury that's either to the skin, the muscle, the fascia, the tendons, the ligaments, any joints, a lot of times that collagen is required to be produced and relayed down within a specific pattern and the ability of BPC-157 to allow for better fibroblast migration and proliferation in that area actually accelerates and strengthens the healing response. Another way in which BPC-157 works is through the upregulation of what's called epidermal growth factor. When it does this, it allows for better wound closure or wound healing because the epidermis is also the skin layer. And through the upregulation of the receptors, we get better and more fast and robust healing within that area. Other areas in which that we could see benefits through the stimulation or upregulation of the epidermal growth factor is it within the mucosal layers of the nose or the gastrointestinal tract? And that's possibly how or one of the ways in which BPC-157 is able to elicit its healing response within wounds and also within the intestinal mucosa. BBC-157 also works through the regulation of nitric oxide. And so nitric oxide, when people hear that, they think a lot about vasodilation, whether it be for workouts or cardiovascular health. And while that's true, there's a little more nuance to the discussion. So we have what's called ENOS and INOS. ENOS is endothelial nitric oxide synthase, and that's the enzyme within the blood vessels that's actually able to stimulate or produce the nitric oxide which allows for that vasodilation. That's very important in the vascular injuries or really any injury context where we're trying to stimulate blood flow to that area, again, to help with oxygenation and help with nutrient delivery or growth factor delivery. And so BPC-157 is able to upregulate the endothelial nitric oxide synthase, the enzyme that we want to have for that nitric oxide to allow for those blood vessels to dilate and those nutrients to be partitioned to that area. But there's also what's called INOS, which is inducible nitric oxide synthase. And nitric oxide, when it's in a healthy balance, can be beneficial for the reasons just discussed. But with inducible nitric oxide synthase, it produces a very large amount, and that nitric oxide can then be used as an oxidative agent and actually can be damaging to the tissue. And so when that is produced in excess, we get the 
reverse effect where we actually are causing damage to that tissue. And studies are starting to show that BPC-157 can actually upregulate ENOS and downregulate INOS, which is very important for healing. BPC-157 is also able to regulate the inflammatory response through some immune modulatory actions. In other words, it's able to downregulate pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1 beta, and interleukin-6. An inflammatory response is essential to be there for a hormetic response or a healing response to occur. The body has to have a signal for something to happen, essentially. But when that signal gets out of control, whether it be in an acute injury or a chronic injury where the acute phase was never fully adequately healed, it leads to a chronic injury where we are still having an inflammatory response, which is leading to tissue, tissue degradation and pain. And so BPC-157 uniquely is able to modulate the immune response to allow for a proper amount of stimulation of healing, but also to limit the inflammatory response to not go so high that we're getting tissue damage. All right, now that we've talked about how BPC-157 can greatly benefit musculoskeletal or soft tissue injuries throughout the body, let's talk about how it can improve gastrointestinal health. So when we have excess inflammation, either due to toxins in the food that we're eating, the environment, excess stress, alcohol or drug consumption, the cells that line the intestinal tract can become damaged and we can get what's called leaky gut. Leaky gut is where the intestinal epithelial cells, the gaps with, that are within between them that are required for nutrient absorption become inflamed and overly expressed. And so this allows for pathogenic or large particles to enter circulation, which can predispose certain autoimmune conditions or infl inflammation. And when that happens, a lot of the times the inflammation is left out of control and people have symptoms of bloating or gastrointestinal discomfort or constant diarrhea or constipation. And it can possibly lead to things like IBS, IBD, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, even though those are significantly more multifactorial. They all are associated or related to excess inflammation within the gastrointestinal tract. So BPC-157 is able to actually regulate not only the inflammatory response like it does throughout the rest of the body, but also the proteins that are required for maintaining those gap junctions and allowing for healing of a leaky gut and not allowing those large particles or pathogenic particles to enter circulation. Some of those proteins could be Claudin's, Occludin-1, or Zonial Occludin's. And these are extremely important and can be tested for through stool testing, but for maintaining that gastrointestinal health and not allowing greater than what's necessary permeability um, within the intestinal tract. Lastly, about the mechanism of action of BPC-157 is that there's good research to show that BPC-157 is able to cross the blood-brain barrier and help to regulate neurogenesis and help with reducing inflammation within the brain. It does this, or it's speculated and within cell models to do this through the upregulation of what's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is important in neuroplasticity and our brains beneficially changing, and it's also able to regulate the NMDA receptor, which is a receptor that's required for excitation or neuronal signaling within the brain. And when left in excess, the neurons can be hyper-stimulated and that can be toxic to a neuron. So there has to be a fine balance between excitation and the GABA system, which helps with the inhibitory responses within the central nervous system. And so BPC-157 can be great for reducing neuronal inflammation and also helping potentially with neurodegenerative disorders, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, at reducing the inflammation. And then mechanistically speaking, if we're able to reduce the inflammation and upregulate the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, then we could possibly get some neuronal regeneration within the brain. That's completely mechanistic at this point, but I do think BPC-157 could be a good adjunctive therapy in many neurodegenerative disorders. So in what situations would we wanna use BPC-157? We would likely wanna use it in any musculoskeletal injury, such as sprains, strains, minor tears that don't require surgery, and even if they do require surgery, BPC-157 would help with the healing response. For all the reasons previously mentioned, I've seen in my practice and anecdotally and in the research that BPC-157 is able to significantly accelerate the healing period and also likely the strength at which the tendons or ligaments 
um, or soft tissues are able to heal at. So not only do we cut down the time that it's required to get back to activity, but also that tissue is likely to be stronger than it would have been without utilizing the BPC-157. Other conditions in which that we may want to utilize BPC-157 is with gastrointestinal disorders, like we talked about a little bit earlier as well, utilizing it in things like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, celiac disease, IBS, IBD, or anyone dealing with what would potentially be increased intestinal permeability, BPC-157 seems to be great at acting within that intestinal mucosa, reducing that inflammation and helping to regenerate the tissue that's within there. Another area in which that BPC-157 could be utilized is within the neurodegenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, or anybody that's experiencing increased Neuronal inflammation, now whether that be because of a traumatic brain injury or a concussion or somebody who's been, has very poor sleep and been extremely stressed out and they're assumed to be under great burdens of inflammation, this may be able to help accelerate the healing response within the brain and improve cognitive effects there. A question that a lot of people want to know is what's the difference between BPC-157 and pentadeca arginate? For most purposes, they're interchangeable as they're analogs of one another. Both are 15 amino acid peptides, but the difference is, is that the pentadeca arginate was designed to be a little bit more stable when taken orally or through the intestinal tract as there can be a little bit of degradation of the oral peptides versus when using injectable. And it's likely that it can have a slightly improved cellular effect as well. In my practice, I've seen both work in many patients and not really a significant difference between the two. Both work well when taken orally and both work well when taken through a subcutaneous injection. That's something else that's unique about BPC-157 versus other peptides. A lot of other peptides, which a peptide is just a short amino acid sequence that doesn't meet the requirements to become a protein and it works as a signaling molecule within the body. A lot of peptides have to be injected either subcutaneously or intramuscularly to bypass the digestive system to allow for systemic uptake and utilization within the cells. BPC-157 likely because of its original parent protein is gastric stable, meaning that we can take it orally and through an injection. So. Again, I tend to use it with patients who have intestinal disorders, just tend to use it orally. I find that that's easier and works better. And for other patients um, who are struggling with musculoskeletal disorders or neurodegenerative conditions, we can use it through a subcutaneous injection there as well. Another thing that I didn't get to mention earlier in the video is that BPC-157 is able to actually upregulate growth hormone receptors at cells. And this may play another role in a synergistic effect with increasing growth hormone to where the growth hormone can allow for better lipolysis or fat breakdown, fat loss, and also with upregulating what's called uh, insulin light growth factor one, which stimulates muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth. So in practice in combination, if someone's struggling with an injury and they're looking to lose weight or they're looking to put on some muscle, BPC-157 often works quite synergistically with some of the other growth hormone releasing peptides such as tesamorelin, sermorelin, CJC-1295 often combined with ipamorelin, and really any anything else that's going to upregulate the growth hormone pulse or growth hormone secretion that goes on within the brain. So overall, I think BPC-157 is an incredible peptide that has a lot of clinical use applications, whether it be to reduce systemic inflammation, neuronal inflammation, or stimulate healing virtually anywhere in the body. It seems very effective at that. Side effect wise, I think the side effect profile in the literature and also in my use in practice and through consulting other people, the BPC-157 has a very low side effect profile, but there is always potential for side effects to occur with peptides. And it's, for that reason, very important to make sure that you're getting them from a reputable source, ideally a compounding pharmacy that's regulated by the FDA, and not getting it offline because of the risk of contamination or like lipopolysaccharides or endotoxins, and making sure that you're working with somebody who understands your medical history and your goals and scenarios and how to use these peptides properly. Because although a lot of them can be safe and very effective at achieving what they were designed for, it's important to know everything about the patient and make sure that there's going to be no interactions or any contraindications with medical history or current state of health. So 
Again, BPC-157 is one of the peptides I really like to use often for a lot of different issues. If I didn't answer any questions in this video and you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit like, subscribe as we're trying to increase the subscriber count and get these videos out to more people. If you have any suggestions of videos or topic ideas that you'd like to see a video about, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well.